In this training module, we will show you how to use the different measurement tools to analyze your surveys. Welcome to Propeller U. From the home page, you can select your desired survey by clicking on the pin on the map that corresponds to that survey's site or select it from the list. Once you've selected your site, the most recent survey for that site will be presented. If you need to work on an older survey for that site, click on the survey drop-down menu and select the desired survey. Once you've selected your survey, the different tools you can use will load. The measure tab is selected by default. To create a measurement, click on Create a Measurement. A list of templates will appear. To use any of those templates, click on select, or click on the image for that template. You can also filter the available templates by job task. There are four main categories, track progress, calculate volume, site check, or custom. You can also filter the available templates by measurement type. The three options are point, line, and polygon. Keep in mind that some templates will only be useful when you have historical data, since they make comparisons between multiple surveys. In this example, we'll use the point measurement type and the elevation history template. This template will track the change in height of a specific point over multiple surveys. To use it, click Select or click on the image. Once you do, click on any spot in the model where you want to know the historical elevation difference. The viewer will show a chart with the elevation differences for this point across all available surveys for this site. You can give this point measurement a name and click Save. It will be yellow by default. To change the color, click on the yellow circle and a list of different available colors will appear. This feature allows you to keep your different measurements better organized. You can use different colors for the different measurement types you will be doing. You can also click on the template drop-down menu if you want to use a different template. Below you'll see the coordinates for the point you created. The coordinates are based on the coordinate reference system that the site is using. You can also add a more detailed description to this point. Remember, if you enter a description, you must click Save. Below the description box, you can also add or edit the information that is presented. To move an item from the measurement, click the trash can icon on the list of items being used. To add an item, drag it from the list of the items on the right and drop it in the available items list on the left. Next, let's take a look at the line measurement. Let's begin by filtering our measurement type to only the line. For this example, we'll use the cross-section comparison template. Measuring cross-sections is a common practice on worksites. This template allows you to view a cross-section of one or more designs of your survey surfaces along a specific line. To compare cross-sections, click on Select or the image for the cross-section comparison template. Next, draw a line across the area you want to compare. Your line can contain multiple vertex points. You must click a second time on the last point to complete your measurement. By sliding your cursor across the chart, you can see the elevation of the most recent survey of the site along the line. You can also add a design surface or previous survey to view how the site has changed over the course of a project. To add additional surveys or designs, click the Add button on the bottom of the chart and choose what file you want to compare. Please note that only surveys that overlap and are not currently selected to compare against will be provided in the list of surveys to choose from. The default view is with the one-to-one -one scale toggled off. This shows a more exaggerated and detailed elevation change. It's useful when creating roadway cross-sections or conducting bench analyses as part of in-pit operations, for example. Toggling on the one-to-one -one scale makes it easy to view the cross-section with the true representation of the surface, provided by a vertical and horizontal scale. As you can see, using our measurement tools is pretty simple. Now let's look at our most commonly used measurement type, the polygon. For a polygon measurement example, we'll use the basic volume template. This template will measure the volume of material within a polygon. To get started, filter by the polygon measurement type and scroll down to the basic volume template and select it. Next, find a stockpile you want to measure. Begin by clicking points outside of the area of the stockpile. You can add as many points to the outside of the stockpile as you wish. To get accurate stockpile volumes, we recommend you use at least 10 points for your polygon. Once created, you need to select one of the volume options by clicking on the Choose a Measurement Type drop-down list. Let's briefly discuss the difference between the options. Smart Volume interpolates a base from the surrounding terrain using the selected points. Reference Level Volume Measures from a horizontal plane based on a defined reference level. Survey Volume Compare. Calculates the volume using a previous data set or imported design surface as a base. Design Volume Compare. Calculates the volume between two design surfaces. Custom Base Volume. 
Customize the base from which a volume is measured by adjusting the elevation of each vertex point. In this example, we'll select the smart volume. The results will be presented in three sections, the cut, net, and fill. For the smart volume, the cut is the volume above the base level. The net is the volume required to reach the smart volume's interpolated base. Lastly, the fill is the empty areas below the base level. On the viewer, you can also change the view of your polygon. You can select 3D cut fill, 2D cut fill, or contours. Below your results, you can also make use of the built-in calculator to enter the tonnage or density values for the materials you're measuring. You can also change the default values for the heat map. If you do make a change, make sure to click Apply for the changes to reflect on your viewer. Just like the other measurement types, you can also add a detailed description of the measurement you create. To learn more about the different volume measurements, check out the supporting documentation associated with this module, or visit our knowledge base, help.propellerarrow.com. Now that we've covered how to use the different measurements, let's talk about the bookmark function and promoting a measurement to the site level. Any measurement template you use can be bookmarked. We highly recommend you bookmark the templates you commonly use to save time. To bookmark a template, click on the bookmark logo within the template picker. Your bookmark templates are available on the main survey page in the measure tab. Every measurement you create can be promoted to the site level. Promoting a measurement to the site level means that the measurement will be available on all surveys for that site. This allows you to make comparisons between the same areas across different surveys for the same site. To promote a measurement to the site level, click on or hover over the measurement name that you want to promote and click on the three dots menu next to the measurement name and click on Promote to Site. Measurements that have been promoted to the site level will display a star icon next to the name. There are also some other features in the measurement menu that we'll cover next. To find these, click on the three dots next to the measurement. Within the measurement menu, you can also share the measurement. This feature is really useful when you have tens or hundreds of measurements and want to share a specific measurement with someone. To share the measurement, click the Share Measurement option on the measurement menu. This will generate a link that you can copy to and then share with other users that have access to the site. When they open the link, they'll be taken directly to the measurement you shared, instead of just to the site. This menu also gives you the ability to navigate to and center the viewer on specific measurements by clicking the Fly to Measurement option. You can duplicate within this dataset or copy the measurement to another dataset. This is helpful when the measurement needs to be on only a few surveys for the site, but not all of them. From here, you can export the measurement. Depending on the measurement type, the list of available files to download will be different. For polygon measurements, you'll get the option to export a DXF, KML, or point club. These exports are only for the area covered on the measurement, not the entire site. If you need to make an edit to the measurement shape or name, you can also do it from here. If the measurement is no longer needed, you can delete it. Now that we've learned how to use the measurement tools, let's review some best practices on how to keep your site organized. We know that on some surveys, you'll create many measurements. We recommend you create folders to organize all your different measurements. To create a measurement folder, click on the Measure tab and click on Add Folder. You will be presented with the option to name your folder as well as the option to make the folder available at the site level, just like with the individual measurements. Once the folder has been created, you can add multiple measurements by selecting them and using the Move To option at the bottom of the screen or by dragging and dropping the selected measurements to the desired folder. Once you have added measurements to your folders, you can activate all the measurements within the folder by simply checking the box next to the folder. To learn more about folder measurements, visit our knowledge base. In this module, we learned about the point, line, and polygon measurement tools available in the platform. We also covered how to bookmark templates, export files, and how to share your measurements with your team. Thanks for watching. For more information about how to use these tools, you can access the supporting materials associated with this module or check out our knowledge base, help.propellerarrow.com.